Okay, so my name is Melina Del Mar here. I work for your aunt. Um, we're just going to ask her a few questions. So let's start with the basics. You were born in Wolverhampton, Low Hill area of New England in 1979. What led you down the path to becoming a musician? And who were your influences and encouragements? Uh, at first, I decided that I my, my career, I, the first time I heard that Zeppelin's physical graffiti, when I was 14 years old, and um, the way it made me, uh, it was actually a final, and the way it made me feel was, was uh, you know, I, like nothing I'd ever felt before, and I decided that I wanted to try and make people feel like that. But it was, it was before that I realized that I could sing. I was well. It was before that that I wanted to be able to sing. From the age of maybe four or five, I would sit and stand in front of the mirror with a hairbrush and sing to Madonna or whatever it was. But um, and then just constantly tortured my mother until the age of about. 13 or 14, singing along to whatever was on the radio, but her begging me to stop. But um, it was around that, the age of 14 that I had the opportunity to sing in public for the first time. And um, it was really, I didn't know what was going to come out of my mouth, but I, I had just a, 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 a belief or a knowing from a very young age that that was what I could do and that was what I was destined to do really. And luckily when when I I sang and when I opened my mouth it the sound wasn't too bad. So <laughs> that was uh, when I knew for sure that that I could sing. Oh, um when did you realize that you knew you had a voice or an ear for music? When did you have a light bulb moment? Yeah, it was really, it was a process, like I said, over the years of just knowing that it was, it was in there and it was, it was, a, it was my destination, but um, without really having any kind of proof, until that moment when I, I took, took a microphone in my hand and said, that's wonderful. Um, what was your separation from Interscope like, and how did you move forward as an independent artist? Uh, the last little bit of time with Interscope, it was it was very clear that neither of us really wanted to continue the relationship. So the separation was was actually fine. In a way, it was more comfortable than the, the relationship itself. Um, as we were separating, I was on tour with Athletics, um, and, uh, you know, when I finally I came off tour, that tour with Annie, and went home to England for a couple of weeks to decide whether I wanted to move back there or not. And then uh, when I came back to the States to collect my things, I, I met Dan Burns, who uh, ended up producing Things You Should Know With Me and, and eventually Tiger Mendy. Mm -hmm. So the, the path to being independent was seamless, really. It, was, it wasn't necessarily a big decision. It was just... It was natural because I had the means to make the records. I had the musicians around me that were unbelievably amazing. And the songs were just coming. And, and Dan was a great producer. And it just really seemed it was a very natural process. And when that was all done, it, it just seemed uh, the right thing to do, especially for, for things you should know that that kind of very confessional deep thing. It just, you know, some of the songs of, for instance, Do You is like six minutes long. Mm -hmm. And so it's for everything I read. It's quite cinematic and moody. It just seemed the right 
the natural course to release it independently. <coughs> and, the, and the same with Tiger Bending. You know, mm -hmm. it was a long process to make that record because I was funding so myself. Mm -hmm. Really just... Oh yeah, I was just trying to figure your name for Which is why, you know, it took so long. It takes so long for me to make a record. Um, oh, oh, no, no. Yeah, it was just... Oh, uh, no natural. problem. Yeah, okay. now, so. It's been nearly 15 years since the first Bloody Mystery, which was supposedly recorded and mixed in 10 days. How do you feel about yourself oh, and your music now, as opposed that's to that's when that was recorded? It's, fun. it's the first Blood Mystery. It's, uh, it's funny because I have to listen to that uh, record again. No flip-flops or shorts. I misspoke. No, it's <laughs> I don't know. Uh, because of the 10 year anniversary, I, I re released it on vinyl. I was seeing that. Of course, I had to listen to it again quite intensely, and it was such a strange journey to kind of be sucked back into the vortex of that 17 year old, you know? It was a very strange feeling, I guess, for, for other people, the closest thing would be to look at a photo album from that time. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. To watch a video or something from that, that kind of period, but it's you know parts of me cringe when I hear it and bristle, but parts of me really kind of part of me misses that um, abandonment that I had in a way. You know, it's a really raw record emotionally. And I was very unself when it came to just possibly to a fault but when it came to just expressing myself gutturally you know and I think that was the charm of that record in a way and so you know and lyrically too like the lyrics to the message to Apollo when I read them now I just <laughs> or when I hear them now I'm just blown away that I would decide to put that on a, on a record, <laughs> but I'm really happy that I, that I did because, uh, you know, it was a very honest and um, expressive way of communicating my feeling, you know, it's, it's at the age of 17 to 21, I don't think any of us really can grasp fully what is going on emotionally or Mm -hmm. They're very formative years, and you're just figuring out who you are and your sexuality in a way, or, or you know, personality. personality, yes, and you know, deciding what it is you want and what, what direction you're going. And some people are fortunate enough to just at a very early age already be very close to that thing that it is that they want to be, you know, and very focused and hone that very specific and focused destination for themselves, but I, I did not have that at all. I was completely erratic, all over the place, and, you know, I think, and, and my path as an artist is very much like that too, like I don't, there are a lot of bands and artists who have very focused lines of a journey. Mm. I'm a little bit more, uh, I don't know, erratic about it. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> if you can answer this one, um, how will you help shape the next generation of musicians and how will your music influence them? I mean, at the very least, I would hope that someone with a, a taste for being an artist would listen to my music or lyrics or get a feeling from a performance and, and be inspired to go out to create something good. Mm -hmm. That's all you can hope for. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, if, if it's not that, then to just derive some joy from, from the art that I might, whether that be joy through being able to feel some kind of sadness or emotion. Emotion, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
Um, you were recruited by Maynard James Keenan to work with Christopher in 2009. What ultimately drove you to say yes? And on that same note, can we expect to hear any new music from Christopher? Uh, I was driven to say yes by the music that I made. Mm -hmm. Did they I went to Gerardo to, to meet him and work with Matt Mitchell. Work with him and Matt Mitchell is, I guess you would call it an audition, <laughs> which is the first and last audition I ever did, but actually that's not true. I did one for Broadway and people, and thankfully didn't get the part. Like I said, it's been an erratic journey, but um, yes, you can expect new music. Okay. Um, I personally saw you play with Christopher at San Quanta in 2014, which was an incredible experience. Your energy is both powerful and delightful at the same time. Where do you draw your energy from during your performances? That's a good question. I mean, when you're on stage with Maynard, it's hard not to draw most of it from his energy because his energy is very powerful as a performer. Um, you know, and that's kind of my job with Pussifer in a way, is to feed from his energy and then back into him. You know, that's kind of the balance of that partnership, I think, that relationship between me and him on stage, and in a way between all of us. But, you know, ultimately, There's something that's always happened when I've stepped onto a stage or opened my mouth to sing to different levels. Um, it's sounding at the risk of sounding pretentious, somewhat intangible until the time that it happens. You know, mm -hmm. it's some, a certain energy or, I guess, creativity or mysterious gift from the, I don't know, from the atmosphere that, that, that just comes, maybe it's just adrenaline. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, it comes from it. But I find that when I'm on stage, I tend to access parts of my personality that I, I couldn't necessarily in yeah. yeah, you just, you seem more mellow here, and then on stage you're very animated, and there's something very different about it. Yeah, I think, I don't know, but probably, I find there's a lot of performers or artists that I know that, uh, and you've probably seen it as well. Seen it, you know, questions for you. Um, you just released Tiger Mixes, a double LP featuring mixes from all your songs from Tiger Mending, an album released in 2012. How did you come up with the context for the name for these albums? For Tiger Mixes? Um, and Tiger Mending, kind of like the, the names for both of them. Tiger Mending, I, I took the title actually from a, a painting by an artist named Amy Cutler. Mm -hmm. And 
uh, a friend of mine showed me a painting that she did of it's called Tight Mini. It's it's of a, a, a two or three it's just wild, huge tigers <laughs> laying around being sewn up and fixed by these old kind of native looking women. Mm -hmm. With no explanation of course, I just, I just found it really thought provoking and beautiful. And I also thought the name just sounded And it appealed to me somehow, resonated to whatever was happening. I guess within the songs for me, it, was, it seemed to be a good um, blanket of expression for everything that was happening in the songs. Okay. And Tiger makes this was just a smart ass way of naming a remix album. Oh, that was Tiger, Tiger Mending. Yeah. Okay. So you're on tour for Fears with Tears for Fears, um, obviously. How is this unlike or like any other tour you've been on? Where do you see yourself in the tour headed? Hmm. I mean, all tours are totally different. I mean, uh, tour, this is, you know, this is the most comfortable kind of tour you can be on. And the legacy of these people in this band is just an energy that surrounds you wherever you go. It's kind of, you can kind of get isolated by it, you know, in a way, but it's also really enjoyable experience to, to get treated that way and to have beautiful tone. Go to beautiful cities like go to Asia with these guys in South America. All of these very comfortable situations. Mm -hmm. But then, you know, when I do my own tours, it's uh, it's the exact opposite to that. Mm -hmm. It's five or six or more people in a band with all the gear. Yeah. Everybody sharing a hotel room and wanting to fucking kill each other. But it's a lot of fun. Also, it's a it's like a a, a different, a very different. It's it's across the board. It's it's interesting. It's um, really grateful to have them. Yeah, the tour is ending tomorrow, this one. So that's where that's going. Hi. Hi. Two minutes, and I want to get you a little bit of rest before you have to do your show. Thank you. Um, yeah. Oh, Sweet. So finishing tomorrow at airplane. Thank you. And then finally, what is your what is it that you're ultimately trying to accomplish as you make your way through life? Not only as an artist, but just as a person as well. Do you have a message that you're trying to convey? And do you believe in using music to make ne changes needed in society? Mm -hmm. Hi, how you doing? Yeah, you can simplify. <laughs>
Make your way through life. Um, enlightenment. Enlightenment. And exclamations of joy on a daily basis. Wonderful answer. I like it. All right, Karina. Thank you for your time. I greatly appreciate it. Thank you so much. It's very nice meeting you. I appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.